and welcome to a new episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the natural dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns and yeah, produce this little podcast every now and then if I find the time. <laughs> So yeah, today I'm back with another um, regular knitting related episode um, and I'm really happy to finally be able to share some knitting with you again because yeah, the last few episodes were very um, yeah shop kind of related and stock related and about the yarn that I um, released and so it's nice to just sit down and have a little bit more of a casual chat today so um, yeah I hope you'll enjoy and I don't have a lot to share because um, yeah I'm still working on a few secret projects in the background um, and I've actually been quite busy the last few weeks um, don't know if you share this but I kind of always try to use the energy of a new year to not really make resolutions or anything, but to really uh, plan new things, plan the year ahead, uh, think of what I want to achieve in this year. And yeah, since it was um, the first season as a self-employed natural yarn dyer last year, um, this is the first year where I can sit down and have a proper business planning time um, at this time of the year. So I try to make the most out of it and yeah, have a little bit of planning um, and yeah, so there was not a crazy lot of knitting but I managed to finish a few things and also cast on some new things and I will also want to share some um, ideas all around sock, sock knitting with you. Well, not really ideas, I would like to have a little bit of an exchange about it because yeah, I'm... I have some ideas and I want to um, get back into sock knitting again um, for 2022 so yeah that's definitely a plan um, but yeah good to be back and chat about knitting today so I hope you've been well I hope that January has been treating you well so far um, here it's actually pretty gloomy all of the time which is also why I didn't manage to record an episode any earlier because it was just rainy and grey every day and today is actually the first day where I see some sun and blue sky so I really hope I can manage to get outside um, after recording this episode just because I feel like I haven't had any sun and vitamin D in way too long um, and as much as I'm a winter lover I guess uh, at some point you just really need some uh, whether that's a bit more mood lifting um, if that's something you can say um, so yeah I can't wait to share my knitting with you um, there have been a few different product, uh, projects and also uh, I have some plans for new ones um, but the first section I want to start out with is my finished objects so the first finished object I want to share with you is <laughs> has been hibernating for quite a while but I think I told it in my last episode that I was planning on finishing this one over the holidays um, like the Christmas holidays I didn't do so but I finished it just now and yeah it's already a favorite this is my Bonnie cardigan by Orlan Suge of Ted Besh and um, it's just a very simple raglan construction um, but with just the right details I feel um, it's a very simple and minimalistic pattern as you can see um, but it's just very well designed and it has some small features such as this little uh, lateral braid or how do you say Lat Latvian braid I don't know but um, this little braid around the cuffs and there also is repeated 
at the hem. I don't know if you can see the yarn is really dark, so it's actually a bit difficult to show. Um, but yeah, there are just a few very sweet little design details and <laughs> you might sound, uh, find it crazy when I tell you now, but um, this was actually designed in our Rustic Merino worsted yarn um, that we currently stock in the shop. Um, and if I was a good person, I would have knitted a sample for myself out of that yarn, but I chose another one. <laughs> um, no, but actually um, this is uh, one of the, from the August collection of uh, the Nutidan yarn release of last year. This is the colorway Ur Aska. And I've just really been wanting to knit a very minimalistic cardigan out of this yarn. And so, because I loved knitting the bunny so much, ah, I should have, I should maybe tell you, I knitted the original sample of this design um, for Olan. So I knew that it's a very enjoyable pattern and I kind of wanted to um, make a version that's very lightweight that I could also just throw over whenever I'm working. Um, and so I decided to make it out of the uh, Ureska colorway of Nutidin Yarn. And I think it turned out so nicely and it really, I can already tell it's going to be a true wardrobe staple and yeah, I'm already very in love with it. I think um, from what I remember and also from how it feels, I think this blend of Nutidin has quite a bit of Gotland in it. Um, it also, I don't know if you can see, but I know Nutidin usually has kind of a halo, but this one has an exceptionally heavy halo, um, which is why I also think there might be quite some Gotland in it. And I just love this cool dark gray color. Um, it's like a charcoal and yeah, I can definitely tell it's going to be a wardrobe staple that I just will wear a lot over all kinds of um, dresses and jumpsuits and stuff. So yeah, absolutely in love with it. Um, yeah, what did I do about the pattern? Um, I didn't really modify it a lot. Um, I think I maybe cropped it a tiny bit, but not loads. Like I maybe, not, not as much as I usually do. I made it a little bit longer than I usually make my cardigans. Um, but anything else, I just knit to pattern. And uh, if I would now remember which size I cast on for, but I usually go for a size four. So I would assume that's the same. And it's actually a fairly quick knit because you just knit it on five millimeter needles. So it's just pretty quick. And um, yeah, so I shouldn't be, <laughs> I shouldn't have been, uh, it shouldn't have been taking me so long um, as it did. I really had it in my, one of my project bags for quite a while and I don't know why I lost the mojo um, about it, but yeah, I'm really happy that it's finished now. And <sighs> what I always have to say about Olan's patterns is that they are just so well made. Um, and so well written and what I exceptionally love about this is the I don't know if you can see that but the shaping of the neckline um, is just so smooth and it's just made by um, some short rows and some casting off of stitches and yeah it's just you know necklines can be fiddly sometimes I feel and um, with this pattern there is nothing that co could go wrong because it just sits so so well and yeah, I will make sure I will uh, to insert some wearing clips um, just so you can see how it wears. Um, but yeah, it's just a pretty boxy fit um, cardigan. I think, oh yeah, in the original pattern, I think she actually um, put some decreases here below um, the arm just so it goes a little bit more, like it's a bit more fitted but I omitted these. So I just knitted it to the full length in the just in the boxy shape. So um, yeah, that's definitely one tweak I did. Um, and yeah, I'm just really happy with it and cannot wait to now 
grant myself to another cast on in Nuti Den Yarn maybe at some point. I don't know which pattern yet. I know I have been discussing this in my last episode as well. Um, but I haven't made up my mind yet either. So let's see what I can come up with uh, next time. So yeah, that was my Bonnie cardigan and I can definitely recommend knitting it. Um, I know my friend Eva of the Blue Rabbit House has made a version as well out of a really pretty dark burgundy color of Nuti Den Yarn, um, which I don't remember the name of, um, but it's really beautiful and yeah. It's very wearable and I can really recommend it. Ah, uh, one more thing I should maybe say before I forget. These little buttons. You might have seen them in another episode of mine before, but they are handmade um, from uh, wood by a friend, um, a f the mother of a friend of mine, <laughs> who is actually having fun with um, working with wood and stuff. And she collects little different branches of different um, trees from her garden and then she makes those little buttons and I think they are just so cute. I'm even thinking of maybe stocking them at some point so yeah just let me know if that's something you're interested in um, just because I feel like they go so well with wo any woolen garment and um, yeah they're not too much they're still pretty minimalistic but um, I think they just go so well with wool and I've been using them on basically all my cardigans um, the last cardigans I knitted so yeah let me know if that's something you're interested in. <laughs> I have no clue on how to add uh, like notions or these kind of little things to the shop. Um, but if it's something you like, I might look into possibilities of making it available. Um, yeah, so far about my bunny cardigan. Um, the next FO I want to share with you is... Um, one that you might have seen in the last episodes um, where I was talking about the January shop update. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to still include it because it's uh, even though it's a sample for a certain yarn, I still wanted to include it in my regular knitting episode just in case you are not really interested in my um, little more shop info related videos and you're rather watching the episodes. Um, so you don't miss out on any of those. So I'm uh, a little bit repeating myself here, but this is my fairy bouquet sweater by Joanna Ang. And her Instagram handle is Joang, Joang Knit, I guess. Um, I will uh, link her down below as well. Um, but it's just a really pretty pattern, I think. Um, it's just a round yoke with some texture and lace um, and then the texture goes into a really pretty pattern on the sleeves as well and she also added some, after the round yoke, added some raglan uh, increases below um, so the arm hole is a bit deeper and yeah, the sleeves are very more like a balloony kind of shape. I don't know if you can see, but yeah. So um, this pattern was an absolute delight to knit and it was uh, originally um, made to be a sample of my um, limited edition yarn number four that I just sold in the January update. And I held it double with a strand of mohair. Um, and this was the colorway Shell. Um, unfortunately, this yarn is now sold out, um, thanks to all of your um, support. But you could definitely use any kind of um, woolen spun fingering weight yarn for um, a similar effect, I guess. Because what I did is hold the yarn, which is the fingering weight woolen spun 100% uh, Romney yarn, I held it double with some Knitting for Olives mohair and um, tried to knit it at a little bit more of a looser gauge. Um, so I knitted it on 4.5 millimeter needles and that gave a really beautiful drape. And 
yeah, in combination with the airiness and lightness of the woolen spun yarn, it's actually really lightweight and very nice to wear. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something um, I will experiment with further in the future, just because I really love the combo of a woolen spun yarn with a strand of mohair. So um, definitely can recommend. And yeah, if you want a similar um, texture to the yarn I used with the mohair, you can try and use Tuka wool fingering because I have been swatching with that yarn and it definitely has the same gauge as the limited edition number four. Um, so in case you weren't able to snag some skeins in the last updates, then you can also use the Tuka wool fingering. Um, just be careful because there is also another um, Tuka wool that's called Tuka wool sock. That's a fingering weight as well, but that one contains nylon. So um, as you know, I'm only using 100% natural yarns here on this channel. Um, so I personally wouldn't use um, a nylon yarn. Um, but yeah, just so you can keep that in mind that there are two options of the Tuka wool um, and the fingering is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and in case uh, you need some inspiration, um, maybe you got some skeins in the last update of the limited edition number four and you are not sure what to knit with it, um, yeah, I can definitely recommend this pattern. And it takes very little yarn if you hold it double with a mohair. I think I've only used a little bit over two skeins for a very cropped version. I mean, you can see that this is pretty short. But um, I think for the full length, you shouldn't even need four skeins um, in like a medium to large size. And so I think, yeah, it can go really far <laughs> with that yarn. Um, I made this one a size larger than I would normally do. I normally wear like a size four because I do prefer a bit of a more room. I'm around... A, uh, 100 centimeter bust circumference so um, just so you can kind of know um, and compare yourself maybe um, when you're not sure about the sizing but yeah I knitted a size 5 um, just because my gauge was quite a bit smaller than uh, it was supposed to be in the pattern so I went for size 5 and this one really fits me perfectly and I really love um, how it works. <laughs> Actually it's really funny because I have, I always thought I cannot really wear round yokes at all. I thought this doesn't really suit my um, my body shape or whatever and this pullover definitely proved me wrong because I really love how this sits on me and yeah now the whole world of uh, round yoke sweaters is open for me. <laughs> And I will definitely keep experimenting with round yokes uh, more in the future. Um, sorry, that was just my phone vibrating. I should maybe turn it off next time when I record. <laughs> no, but this is my fairy bouquet sweater and I can definitely recommend... Um, oh, I should maybe say I used um, a little over, like let's say 250 grams of my limited edition number four and four balls of the Knitting for Olive mohair. Although I would say go for a fifth because this is really, really short, even for me as a very short person. So um, I'm 157, so um, yeah, just so for reference, this really is short. So if you want it a little bit longer, then definitely go maybe for a fifth skein of the mohair um, if you consider knitting this pattern. Um, have I forgotten anything about this? Oh yeah, I did a few modifications, I should maybe say. Um, the original pattern calls for a twisted rib on the neckline and also on the cuffs. And I just went for a regular rib, just because I don't really enjoy the look of a twisted ribbing. I don't know why, it's just a personal thing. <laughs> but I prefer it a lot more with just the normal um, ribbing. 
And I also um, changed something about the pattern on the sleeves because originally those little cables on the outer part of the pattern, they are supposed to be going like a zigzag more and I kind of made them in a way that they are like twisting around each other um, just because I li liked how it looked and yeah, I just did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are the modifications I made and then of course, as I always do, I cropped the sweater quite a bit. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and this was the colorway shell held together with the Knitting for Olive mohair in the Mushroom Rose colorway. And um, yeah, if you're new here, maybe all my yarn that I'm selling is uh, either in a natural sheepy color or um, naturally dyed with only uh, natural colors and nothing artificial or anything about it. So yeah, um, I really hope that some of you might think of making another or their own fairy bouquet sweater because I can really recommend it. It's so nice to knit and it sits so well and yeah, I'm just really happy with it. And even though I went a bit out of my comfort zone with knitting around yoke sweater, um, I'm very pleased I did after all. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy it now. So, these are my finished objects for today. And um, so now I will uh, go over to my works in progress. So, my works in progress, there is not a lot because I have been mainly focusing on one project that I've been knitting on that I'm going to show you now. Um, but yeah, it will be done hopefully soon so then I can cast on um, another Nutiden um, project which I have been thinking of for so long. You probably know by now. <laughs> but. The first work in progress I want to show you is <laughs> a little bit of a weird shape right now because it is knit bottom up. Let me see how I can show you with this. Um, it's knit bottom up and then joined at the sleeves, but I can maybe show you this side first. This is my Nature's Cardigan by uh, Ozetta. I should know what her, the designer's full name is, but I don't know. I will link her below for sure. Um, but this is the Nature's Cardigan and although you cannot really see much about it right now, um, it's kind of a boxy, oversized um, cardigan that is just pretty simple and it's very nice to knit so far. Um, but yeah, it looks a bit strange at the moment because I have only just completed, you start knitting at it at the hem and then you go back and forth and then you separate for um, the sleeves, then you knit the back um, part first and then you start knitting the fronts, which I have only just completed the right front um, and I'm now going to work because that's why it also looks so weird down here. I'm going to work the left front now. Um, and then both pieces are joined at the shoulder with um, a little bit of Kitchener stitch. And yeah, once I've um, knitted the second front, I'm going to just pick up um, some stitches for the sleeves and knit the sleeves and then I should be done. Um, yeah, this is my little friend again, um, my little progress keeper friend. It's actually the only progress keeper I really use because it's so nice. It's so lightweight that it really doesn't uh, pull on my knitting too much and doesn't bother me. Um, but yeah, it was a gift of by my friend Eva of the Blue Rabbit House um, for my birthday last year. And I have been using it non-stop <laughs> since, so it was a great gift. And it's hand-carved from wood by um, a maker called Simple Natural Handmade. Um, and 
yeah, that's the little guy. So yeah. And I just really like it. And especially with those projects where you have like endless rows of stock in it, I like to kind of um yeah, track my progress a little bit because after all, this was quite quick to knit so far. But maybe that's also because I'm really excited about the yarn I'm using. Um, I cannot tell you what it is now um, because it's something that I'm going to bring into the shop in early spring. But I can definitely tell that I'm very in love with it already. Um, and yeah, so this project is a little bit um, a hybrid of a personal knitting project and a sample because with all the yarns I bring into the shop, I'm making sure that I've thoroughly tested them. Um, so I can definitely recommend um, what you can make with it, for example, and what it's suitable for. Because, yeah, I mean, I only sell my yarn online and I totally get that um, if you're shopping for yarn online, you need as much information about the yarn as possible. And especially if it's not something that's very widely available, um, it's nice to have someone guide you through um, what you can make with the yarn, I guess. So that's why I'm trying to provide you with, with as much information as I can. But what I will show you already is something I, what I particularly love about this yarn, and that's the twist. I've also been teasing you a bit on Instagram about this, but I just absolutely love this kind of accentuated twist of the yarn. I just love it. And yeah, I'm going to share more about this uh, in the next episode, I hope. Um, but yeah, it won't be available um, very, very soon. So I still have a little bit of time, but um, yeah, there will be an update in February. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about shop stuff at the end of the episode. If you're not interested in that, you can just um, skip it. But yeah, I think this yarn won't be coming out before March. So um, yeah, you might still have to wait a bit more, but um, that's also giving me more time to prepare samples and show you what it's all about. So yeah, this is my Nature's Cardigan and yeah, I really can't wait to finish this one. It's actually really addictive to knit, even though it's just pretty much stockinette all over. But because I can already see that the fit is going to be very nice, um, I think it's just very fun to knit and I really enjoy it. Um, I'm also thinking about knitting another sample in this yarn and I'm not sure whether you would prefer me to knit it on its own again and maybe in a dyed form or um, I also swatched with it with held double with some mohair. Oh is this the right side or this one? Oh I don't think it really matters. But yeah it also looks very nice in texture and for this one I used a strand of mohair um, of the Knitting for Olive mohair. And I also really love how this swatch looks so I'm actually thinking of making maybe another sample in a textured version. <sighs> decisions, decisions. So yeah, maybe you can help me and let me know what you would be interested in um, me knitting in this yarn. So any help would be appreciated, but I also really love this swatch with the mohair. Um, yeah, but so far about my nature's cardigan, I'm going to keep you updated about this one for sure. So my next work in progress is actually a little bit more uh, colourful and it's housed in this very beautiful project bag um, that I got from Claire at Wool and Nature. Um, she's just an overall awesome artist and person <laughs> and she dyes those um, the fabrics for those bags and then she draws little botanical um, elements and also prints them and all with natural dyes which I find so fascinating. Um, so this is my probably my favorite project bag for sock size projects because it's just really small and it's also kind of a softer fabric so you can easily 
just pop it into a backpack or in a larger bag and yeah that's absolutely what I love it for and yeah I have been using this basically non-stop since I got it last year and yeah it's just very awesome and sturdy and soft at the same time and I can only recommend checking Claire's website out. She announces her shop updates in her Instagram and newsletter I guess and yeah if you can get your hands on a little project bag like this I can only recommend. Um, by the way I always post that below my videos but I just wanted to mention that um, all these products that I'm talking about or recommending to you or anything um, they are not sponsored or anything or I haven't received them like except for the little toadstool marker that was a birthday gift but um, I never receive anything just to promote it on my podcast or something that's not something I do so yeah I bought this pretty one with my own money and I can only recommend <laughs> so yeah the next project I'm going to show you is a sock project which makes me very happy because I haven't been knitting socks for way too long um, but when my friend Lerke of Fabertales um, reached out to me um, whether I would like to collaborate with her on um, a little sock project um, I of course had to say yes because um, it's really awesome and this pattern that she designed um, is just the sweetest thing and I'm test knitting it for her um, in our Corridel sock yarn and look at the little flowers <laughs> I absolutely love them I'm usually not the kind of person for very playful design elements or anything but when Lerke showed me the swatch of this design I was initially in love with the idea of those embroidered flowers. They go all around the cuff and yeah they, this is just so pretty. By the way this sorry there are some ends hanging out but this little stitch marker here is by Dusana Knit. Um, I will link her down below as well and it's one of my favorites for sock knitting because it's just very yeah it's just very nice and handy um, because sometimes when I knit socks on nine millimeter no how do you say nine inch circulars <laughs> um, I tend to um, go round over round over round and forget my um, beginning of the round marker for some reason so these slightly bigger and heavier ones are better at reminding me <laughs> that I should count my rows and stuff so um, yeah these are the Va socks by Fiber Tales, and the pattern is not released yet. It will be, um, it's still in test knitting, but it will be released rather soon, I guess. I, there is not a release date yet, but um, yeah, people are test knitting this pattern right now, and I really can't wait um, for the release. Um, so the yarn um, that Lerke used for her um, initial sample is the limited edition number four again. So my 100% Romney fingering weight yarn, which is also suitable for socks. So if you got a skein of this in the last shop update, uh, you can definitely use that one. But I'm just knitting a version of in our Corydale sock yarn. And just because I know it's... Uh, yeah, the, the yarn was limited and just in case you wanted an alternative, um, I just dyed up a little bit of a springy colorway on um, our Corydale sock base and so far, um, I mean I have only knitted the cuff so far, but with the measurements and how they're supposed to be, um, I think you can use either, like if you didn't purchase the limited edition number four, you could also go for the Corydale sock. Um, and yeah I'm absolutely in love with these because as I said in the beginning um, these last few weeks were really gloomy and dark and rainy it almost rained every day and um, yeah even for me as a winter person it was a bit much so I really was looking for something 
a bit spring-like and it would put me into a good springy mood and so what's better than a sock with embroidered flowers in a nice mustardy spring-like yellow color so yeah these really put me in a good mood and um, yeah the little flowers also are really fun to embroider I was a bit scared at the beginning because I'm not a, an expert at embroidery but they're just really fun and addictive to make so yeah stay tuned for more info on the release um, yeah maybe check Lerke's, uh YouTube channel and her Instagram out uh, to stay, stay informed about it and as soon as the pattern is released I'm also going to send out some information about it and um, yeah maybe subscribe to my newsletter because yeah I'm definitely going to send out a reminder um, once these go live. Um, so yeah. And yeah, maybe a few words about my Cordell sock base. This is a 100% natural, non superwash um, sock yarn with a little bit of a higher twist. Um, so it's holding up quite well despite the fact that it has no nylon in it and no artificial fibers and no superwash and I think it's also essential for the pattern that the yarn is non superwash because those little flowers you can see that they're quite puffy and um, I think if you are using a very very sleek for example superwash treated yarn I guess it could be difficult to get them as puffy looking just because yeah superwash yarn is basically um, not as fuzzy if you are looking at the like the scales of the yarn um, and so yeah it might be difficult to achieve the same look with a yarn that's um, superwash although I'm not 100% sure it's just something my intention tells me so um, yeah if you're knitting these in superwash yarn you can definitely prove me better but I'm just thinking that the non superwash definitely um, accentuates or um, helps with the, the look of the pattern. So yeah, um, I'm going to knit these with a shorter cuff than uh, Lerke's original sample is knitted, just so we can see whether there's a little bit more of a summary version possible with these. Um, and I'm definitely going to keep you updated on Instagram and uh, on my newsletter when the pattern goes live. And yeah, speaking of Corydale sock, there is very few of it left in the shop at the moment. I think we have like one, two, three, oh, definitely below 10 skeins of this yarn at the moment. Um, but there will be a big restock in the next shop update. and. Um, I'm just now working on the die schedule for this um, base and I'm not sure, um, like I'm a little bit indecisive what to go for. So if you have um, any preferences, whether that's variegated, speckled or solid colored yarn or if you have anything you're looking for um, color wise, um, please uh, comment down below and let me know. Um, just because right now I'm might be because of the uh, weather or something I kind of cannot really make up my mind about what colors I want to dye um, maybe because I'm already feeling a bit in like in a sc spring mood but not really <laughs> I don't know but um, yeah if you have any suggestions or anything you've been looking for um, in a naturally dyed sock yarn without superwash and without plastic then please let me know and comment down below um, what your color wishes are um, and yeah so maybe while I'm already talking about shop things um, I can just quickly tell you what's going to what's already planned for the next update um, so the next update will take place in February and there is not a certain date set yet um, because I have to figure a few things out. Um, a lot of my um, family relatives, like close relatives, have their birthday in February, such as my sister and my dad. And 
because we all don't know whether we can even see each other or not um, with all the uh, beautiful situation going on. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I don't know whether there will maybe be a, a, a weekday, no, a weekend where um, we will have like a family meeting or not. So um, I don't want to necessarily plan the shop update now and then there's going to be um, uh, something keeping me from being there for the update or something. So, um, but I should have it all planned next week. Um, so I hope I can announce it on my newsletter next week. And yeah, just a quick info, my newsletter subscribers are informed first before anyone else um, about the shop updates. So yeah, if you want to be one of the first to know, um, it's a good way to subscribe to the newsletter. And But I will, of course, also uh, share on Instagram and yeah, all the other channels I'm on. Um, but yeah, in this update, um, because I have a lot of things planned uh, for this year that will require <laughs> a little bit of shelf space, um, I decided to do a little sale section because I have um, a little stock of single skeins, um, skeins on a base that I don't dye anymore on or whatever and so there will be a section of heavily discounted yarn in the next shop update and I really hope that um, it might be a possibility for you to check my yarn if you haven't really been wanting to um, do the splurge and buy anything in the last few updates so maybe that's a good option to um, try naturally dyed yarn um, or my yarn in particular um, but yeah I'm going to have that one in the next update and it will be marked as a sale section um, in the shop so you will be uh, able to find it easily and yeah I hope that this one um, opens up some possibilities for some of you who might not be sure whether you're ready to spend as much yarn um, or as much money on a hand dyed yarn so maybe that's an opportunity um, so yeah there's going to be the sales section and there's going to be a restock of um, our classic BFM Massam DK and 4 ply bases and as said, there will be loads of sock yarn. Um, partly also because I'm really uh, excited about a little project that Melody of Be Mandarins is hosting, which is called, I think, the Natural Sock Along 2022. Um, at least that's the hashtag, I think. But she's hosting a little bit of a year long knit along. Um, all about natural sock yarns and I'm just really excited because um, I've been experimenting with um, plastic free and non superwash sock yarns for quite a while and have um, made some very nice experiences and I, I don't want to go back to anything um, with artificial fibers so yeah I'm just excited to see whether some people might be um, yeah ready to try uh, natural sock yarns and I'm happy that Melody is encouraging um, some uh, or some of you to maybe try it and yeah for me it's uh, yeah I just love it so much uh, they are to me they are so much warmer than superwash socks and also I haven't had any issues with um, them breaking down or wearing holes or whatever um, but I'm also, yeah, I also do a few things to make them last longer. Let me know if that's something you're interested about. I, I'm just thinking I could maybe record an episode about all about natural sock yarns and natural knitting with natural sock yarns because, I mean, I do have my own um, sock yarn, but I also have knitted with quite a few other people's um, natural bases and so... Yeah, let me know if that's something you're interested in so maybe I can just sit down and uh, gather up all my notes and share with you what my experiences are about this topic. Um, yeah, so anyone else joining the natural sock along? I'm 
definitely a need of more pairs of socks for this year. So um, one plan is definitely to uh, use this very beautiful new sock yarn base by uh, Emma of Woolly Mammoth Fibers who's currently on maternity leave, if I remember correctly. Um, but just before she left for maternity leave, um, come on, focus, she released this beautiful, naturally grey sock base um, that's called Half Sock. And this is the colorway Copper One. And it's a 50% uh, Jacobs and 50% BFL. Um, sock yarn and it's really a lovely rustic kind of sock yarn and I'm really looking forward to try it although I'm always a bit afraid if there's a yarn that has a slightly different yardage than what I'm used to because this one is a it's a four ply but it has a 330 meters per hundred grams instead of a um, 400 meter so um, yeah let me know if you have maybe tried it um, because I'm not sure whether I can just use my standard um, amount of stitches and standard needle size or if I should maybe size up um, for maybe 2.5 millimeter needles instead of 2.25 um, but yeah not sure so if you have any experience <laughs> with the half sock already um, I'm grateful if you would share what you know about it um, so yeah but I will definitely, this yarn will be part of my natural sock knitting for this year, for sure. So, um, one last thing I want to mention before closing off this little episode uh, today um, is that I'm actually really into um, planning the veggie garden season <laughs> for this year. So. Um, yeah, last year was my first proper season of growing my own veggies um, and I'm just, I'm absolutely hooked now and yeah, I would love to um, maybe take you along a bit this year and I'm not sure whether that's actually something that you are interested in or if you're like, oh, stay with the knitting content. Um, but I was just thinking if it would be of interest um, that I share my little uh, veggie garden inspiration because yeah, I'm just so in love with it and I'm learning so much because I have been living in a city for all my life and now we have the possibility to um, go to my boyfriend's parents' place. Um, they live a bit more in the outskirts of the city and there are a lot of possibilities to grow flowers and veggies and um, ever since I <laughs> dipped my toes into the water of this, I'm absolutely hooked and I know it's very early it's still end of January but I'm already planning things and yeah I cannot wait um, for the season to really properly start and yeah so um, if you want me to take you along on my little gardening journeys um, feel free to let me know and also if you have any recommendations on podcasts or um, youtubers or anything any kind of garden related content i'd love to know i'm especially interested in um, like organic gardening and also like um, yeah gardening that is friendly or um, resource friendly and um, respectful of the natural resources that i use so um, like I would never think of using pesticides or anything um, not organic so I'm trying to stay as natural with all the gardening as I can um, and so yeah I would rather be trying to um, just use only natural materials and all these things than anything artificial so yeah if you have any recommendations on um, people with nice garden blogs, podcasts or YouTubers, um, feel free to share them with me. I'm just very new to the, all of this, so any new resource is very appreciated. And yeah, I'm not ob obviously also going to plant some uh, dye plants as well. Um, I grew my own 
um, indigo last year that I also um, yeah, dyed some fabric with. So yeah, I think that was it for this episode. Um, it was lovely to, to chat to you again and sit down and just um, dive into my knitting projects. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode um, and yeah, I can't wait to show you more of my progress. Um, feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or comments on it. I always love to have a little chat in the comments um, of my YouTube videos. So yeah, and also feel free to subscribe to my newsletter um, just in case you want to stay informed about shop stuff. And yeah, let's speak soon. I hope you're having a great day and a good weekend. Bye-bye.